All right, maybe you came back after that little, what I need to do this car. Um, I shot that one, now I'm doing this one. So, let's get to it. Uh, gotta drain this coolant. Replace with water, but before that we'll do the cooling electrical switches and fans and whatnot, and then we'll fill it back up. But, let's drain that coolant. Alright, the, uh, the coolant I put in this car, um, it's fresh, brand new, I'm going to save it, put it in a jug, and uh, collect it, and try to get as much, or get as least amount of dirt in there as possible. So, I got this big, flat plastic bin, which I'm going to collect it, and it's nice because it's, it's huge. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. First off, uh, I'm going to get as much out of the radiator as possible. You probably don't need to do this. Um, I don't have a drain port on my radiator, so I'm going to try to pull out as much as possible and then pop out where the thermostat is on the LS engines and drain it right into that bin and save this stuff. Here's my little trick. Instead of sucking on this hose, this dirty, going to be soaked with coolant hose, if you have an air compressor, air compressor that works. Get yourself one of these nozzles and then just put it on the end. Hopefully this works. It'll start to auto siphon just like that. And as long as it's lower than the other side of the hose, it'll just drain right out and we're gonna get as much as possible and then uh, pop the thermostat hose where it is. Now that our radiator is mainly drained out, there's probably you know a little bit here and there. Uh, we're gonna do these bolts, they're both 10 millimeter. Uh, pop this off and then we'll pop off the thermostat inside of here and get as much of the block as possible and Then we can start uh, hooking up our thermal switch into our head I didn't pop it all off right away. I did leave one bolt up top and just crack the bottom so you can kind of have a controlled drain like that, otherwise you might have a big mess. There we go. Now we'll take the top bolt off. Now if you want to change out your thermostat right, right now, you can. I don't need to. I'm just going to bolt it right back up. And if, uh, I've been over, if I start to overheat on the track, I might have to do the same thing over again. And then all you got to do is uh, drill a little hole in your thermostat so you can have a little bit extra flow through it. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to leave it how it is, bolt it back up, and uh, put in my thermal switch. Here's my review of using a big container like this to catch coolant. 
don't. So now uh, we're going to install our thermal switch and that goes into a little Allen bolt way back here. Wish I had a light to sh show you better. But that little bolt right Right there. Alright, I'll take that out and uh, put her switch on. This bolt right back here is a 10 millimeter if you're if you're wondering. Ooh. I need a little cheater bar, otherwise I'm going to skin my knuckles. There we go, this little bolt, 8 millimeter, um, and that's where we're going to thread our little adapter and uh, for a little uh, fan control switch but uh, I'll go grab that and I'll uh, give you a quick little overview of all the stuff I'm using so here it is all right let's run down the kit to start off this is the original temp sensor in the LS motor um, two plug design I went with a mechanical um, water temp sensor or water temp gauge sensor it's all in one yeah bolt it right in or uh, screw it right in. I guess I could have went with a uh, electrical but I was doing that budget build and uh, just wasn't in the budget so I got a mechanical this is an original sensor um, I forgot the thread size offhand but it I'll just put it right uh, right here that's the size of the thread. Now put that off to the side because we're replacing this because uh, I think the computer controls the fan or unless it's a mechanical fan. I don't, I'm not really sure what it was, but I think that's controlled the electrical fan. But now we have the kit I bought, which controls the electrical fan, which I'll post a link down in the description if you're interested. But uh, to start off, here is the um, switch, which basically all it does is the, um, I think this is the ground that comes off the relay and it crowns out into the block and that's how it's controlled so really it's just a on off switch and this is a I believe it's a 3AS NPT I'm pretty sure I don't remember offhand I think it's 3AS also in the kit comes with the relay I believe this is a 50 amp has the block that comes with it the wires, it's a pretty standard relay. You can find out what all these wires do, but here's a relay, 50 amp. We have a circuit breaker that comes with it. And uh, yeah, you'll need this. This goes in line, you'll see in the directions. A NPT adapter, screws and hardware, and electrical connections which uh, this should cover everything that you need to do or need to control your fan and you can also put a little toggle switch to ground out to turn on your fan manually. Now this will not fit in your LS head because it is a metric um, thread so you need one of these adapters they make two kinds of these adapters. One's a short and one's a long. I had a short one around here, but I can't find it at the time. Um, so this might fit in the short one. But I got the long one just in case because I got the short one before for the mechanical um, water temp gauge. And it didn't fit. You need the long one for the water temp gauge. And I'm thinking you might be able to get away with a short one for this. We'll put some thread sealing on thread sealant on here, thread in here, and then thread this in. Um, we might even dump our, uh, let's see. No, it should be fine because the heads be facing up and they'll 
squeeze out the air. But uh, we'll put some thread sealant on there. Uh, this is where'd it go? Just had it. Ah, under my directions. This is the thread sealant I got. Permatex thread sealant. I got this mainly because you can use this for your fuel system, for your fuel log. I was told by somebody that you shouldn't use Teflon tape on your fuel log because if a little piece breaks off or you know they can clog a jet that's no good so use the um, just say like gel or uh, the liquid thread sealant on your threads uh, I'll put some on here I'll put some on here throw it in and then we can start wiring it up oh and also leave a, I'll leave a link in the description for this thread sealant and for this kit and for the fan I'm about to show right now. This is the fan I'm using. I believe you can use this in either a push or pull design. I'll be using a pull design uh, sitting right behind the radiator. There's little tabs that'll fit in these little grooves. And it also comes with a little wiring harness uh, plug-in so you can make your own little harness connection. It does come with the strap downs already, so you don't need to buy these. I had to buy them for the other radiator. I got those used. Here's the old radiator. It, uh, it was out of a Chevrolet Celebrity. Um, it's basically the same size as the new radiator I'm using. The only difference is it will actually hug the radiator a lot better and maybe the fan profile will bring in more air. I'm not really sure. It might, it might not. So there's only one way to test out is to try it out. I don't have a shroud that goes over the other, the outsides of the uh, fan. But I think that would be totally fine. Um, this thing actually had like little gaps hanging outside around the little black shroud that it has on it. So uh, I'm assuming it's going to be better. It might, it might not, but I think it will. Okay. Here it is. I'm going to go through a little bit of theory about this. Um, in the directions or uh, people uh, online, people say that you're not supposed to use thread sealant um, when putting this in because it needs to ground to this and through the engine. But since I'm using the the liquid thread thread sealant and I got it pretty tight, I think it squeezed out um, some thread sealing thread sealant and does have some grounding it uh, grounding connectivity between this and the switch so I don't think I'm too worried some people say not to do this um, definitely with not, definitely not with this because this probably would stop it from grounding but since I'm using a liquid and tightening it it'll probably squeeze it out and will ground it to thread to thread so I'm pretty sure this will ground out and if I'm wrong I'll come back and I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you I'm wrong and I'll show you and I'll redo it and make sure it's right but I think this will be fine so I'm not too worried even though it says in the directions not to, not to put thread sealant in so just a heads up now this side I'm not worried about because I'm just gonna put it on these threads but it has this surface to ground out on so that will totally, totally be fine so I'll put some on here and we'll throw it into the motor and then we can get towards the electrical. There we go, that should be secure. All right, going through the directions of this fan. Um, this is set up for pull right now, but if you wanted to set it up for push, you loosen up this nut, flip it around, and then put that nut back on and then you're in push mode. It also comes with these little clips that go on the fan like that. I'm not really sure why because there's also these little tabs on the end but I'll be using these clips instead just because of uh, reasons. Oh here's a little connector. So these are little zip tie looking radiator clips. I think they're like quick 
quick nuts or something? I don't, I don't remember. But, if I was putting this in a new radiator, I'd definitely be nervous about it. I see these little clips that fit into the radiator. They're tapered, so I think these fit into here, and they'll fit in between the radiator, so it has a little spring, and you draw it right up close. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna do. If I'm wrong, someone let me know. If this is uh, your nice car, you might want to take some time and get this thing straight, but this is just a dirty drag car and it, and it don't matter. But, it'll be close enough. You just push them right through. All right, I am 99.999% sure that I have this wrong right now. Which, the pad will go against the radiator. The tie will go through the hole. Seat, foam pad, spring, uh, bracket. Into the radiator. Through the other side. And then you will take another foam pad. Uh, rip half the paper off. Rip the other half of the paper off. Stick that on the little zip tie from the other side. I'm going sticky side against the radiator too. Against the radiator. Before I zip it down, I need my little spacer on the bottom. And then I'll take these little clips and if I can get, get out of this one. Make sure that's where I want it. Zip that tight. There we go, just like that. I don't have a nicer radiator, but at least the fan looks nice. I decided this video is getting a little bit long. Um, I put it in two parts. If you want to see the second part, it'll be right there. But if you want to subscribe, that'll be right there. Uh, thanks for watching. You're awesome. And uh, have a good one.